have to get a little bit of chocolate. I think it was gone. You have a little bit of chocolate like there and there. Okay. Shouldn't be chocolate yet. Might be fuzzies from this over. Okay. <laughs> and and action. No. <laughs> Postvention. Yeah. It was a new word to me. Mm. And I, I feel very good about new words. So I put quotes around them and then I'm like, hmm, use this. So not prevention or intervention, postvention. And actually, I thought maybe a little bit today, what we would be talking about, I mean, in a very positive way, is postvention. So what it's like to do strengths now for a while. We've been doing this um, for a few years. Why we do strengths the way that we do strengths, how we do strengths, um, and how we've seen its impact. So it's like a post-vention wrap-up. Like um, a really positive language, uh, big red wrap-up or big red breakfast. Um, nice try, nice try. <laughs> with a really, really good language. Um, so I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit about common questions that we get around strengths both from the program coordinator perspective and the mentor perspective. I am getting on three calls within the next week and a half um, uh, or other organizations who have heard about what Teammates is doing with strengths and they are interested in starting it in their um, own organization. So this might be helpful for me to be able to quickly let them know some of the things we've run into, how we do it. Yeah. And then um, we've had some questions from mentors as to how um, to start implementing strengths with their mentee um, and then from the chapter level um, how we do this so I thought I'd kind of chime in a little bit as to the structure that we have um, and then we can kind of talk about questions that we get often or troubleshooting that we do sure how's that sound sounds good I'll listen attentively um, when we when we think about strengths and um, each of you as program coordinators spend that day at Gallup where we do planning in the afternoon and I can kind of visualize the planning sheet um, how might this work who will help you um, we try to spend some time thinking about a plan and usually strengths training days are usually around a day day and a half um, and either uh, myself or Tess or the combination of the two of us come to your community and we spend about a day and a half with you um, we do training for the mentors Sometimes we do training for the mentees, which is fantastic if we can get to be part of their strengths discovery, as we've talked about the last time. Um, and then, depending on what we feel or what you feel you need as a chapter, we might do a school staff presentation, we might do a parent presentation, um, we might do other trainings while we're there. So really utilizing us um, during that time. And so if you're interested in getting started as a strengths chapter, the first step that you do is to reach out to me and I send you kind of an overall commitment and a timeline on what to expect and then you attend that day at Gallup. Um, that day at Gallup training is required for you to become a strengths chapter and some of our chapters bring their entire board um, which is really fun. Um, some chapters just come with one program coordinator, it kind of depends on what works for you. Um, but it's kind of like we require mentors to go through new mentor training um, before they can become an active mentor. We require programs to go through Gallup strengths training day at Gallup with us before they become a strengths chapter. So, um, how do you get the codes um, when we think about that? We're very intentional with strengths because there is a cost. Um, each code costs teammates um, an amount, uh, a dollar amount, and so um, accountability of where we're distributing codes is really important. And we don't just want to give a code to a mentor and say, hey, go take strengths and have fun with that. We want to know that they're going to take the survey, they'll be able to get some conversation around their results, um, and then also um, have the opportunity to be able to share them with their mentee and share them with others. Um, so from the program coordinator perspective, that's kind of how we do it, why we do it. We see some pretty remarkable engagement pieces. One of the things I shared, um, I'm learning communication means sometimes I learn out loud. 
I was looking at, and you're all familiar with the, the student model, the Gallup student success model. So I was up there talking about strengths, hope, engagement, um, well-being, and academic success. And I realized that my husband prefers to talk to me. His favorite time to talk to me is either after I meet with my mentee or after I've done a strengths training. Those are his two times where he says, call me when you're done. Be sure and call me when you're done. And I'm like, it's because my level of engagement is mm -hmm. here. So that's what we see happening in communities. When mentors are coming in to strengths training, they're super engaged, program coordinators are engaged, there's all this relationship building happening, and then they like go out and they tell other people about it. Yeah. And they go back to work a little bit um, more engaged, they go back to their family a little more engaged, and then we really see it with the students. Mm -hmm. They are engaged during our time. Um, with them, they're engaged with their mentor, um, and we've had lots of great stories from chapters. So I think part of the reason we do it with that intentionality and with the model we've been using is so that the team can be part of that engagement. Mm -hmm. So um, a mentor um, hears from other mentors about strengths that maybe they don't have in their top five. Program coordinators have the opportunity to hear what a mentor's strengths are, um, which often they can see um, and they know, but it's a great dialogue. And then we help to kind of talk about ways that we're going to be able to do the same thing with our mentees. Does that kind of sound like what it's like from the program coordinator perspective? Yeah. So say I'm a program coordinator, and I'm yeah. really excited about implementing this with my chapter, but I also want to implement it with my board. Mm -hmm. How do we go about doing that? That is such a good question, Dennis. <laughs> really hard for me to role play. I'm doing my best. I also. I'm sure Hannah will edit this out, but I have a visual of you having the mask here. No, stop! <laughs> I get out of my head. All right, I'm not looking. I'm not looking at visualizing it. I'm actually looking at the top of your head so that I don't think about it. We actually had a, I just said to give you context in case this isn't able to be edited out <laughs> seamlessly. I had a mascara faux pas earlier today where I didn't have any, and then a gracious coworker had some that I could borrow because I knew we were filming today. And then the application went poorly, and I got back, and it was very waterproof mascara, so I had two major lines. I looked almost like a football player, but it was a little too high to like actually be like the reflective that set football players have. So anyway, it was... It kind of reminds me of the Jen and Millie when I talked about the game that you yeah. can look forward to playing, washing your face and thinking... Is that my eye, or is that my residue of <laughs> eye makeup? Anyway, it all, so... It all comes around. Okay, try um, to visualize my face. Anyway, as it is. I am. I am. Um, so, if you are really excited about strengths as a program coordinator and you would like your board to take strengths, first of all, are all of your board members mentoring? No. Oh, not all of your board members are mentoring. Okay, so here's what we do your board members who are actively matched, we can only provide codes for mentors and mentees who are actively matched, and then program coordinators or coordinators that help to facilitate strengths. So, if your board members are not actively matched, we would encourage you to think about purchasing codes for those board members. You can decide to purchase those as a chapter, or you can ask the board members individually if they would purchase codes for themselves. Okay. okay. Good question. Thank you. And these days, days and a half, when you or Tess or both come out, <laughs> sorry for me to do third person, um, uh, what, do, what do I do during those days? What do I, do, do you give me an agenda? of the sessions that you're going to do? How does that work? We usually work together to structure what you feel your mentors need and what works best for you. So if that's a 7 a.m. mentor training or a 7 p.m. or both, um, that's absolutely fine. Your role is really to be that facilitator to help mentors be excited about being there. Sometimes uh, chapters provide food. Um, you as a coordinator are going to help to distribute codes to those mentors. Um, and then they'll be letting you know what their strengths are, which is a great way for you to build that name, claim, aim tool for them right away. So if you are a mentor and I'm the program coordinator and you send me your top five, I'm able to say, absolutely, Tess, I see your context in the way that you and your mentee are using maps a lot. I love that you're able to use maps during your mentoring time. So you can help to affirm that strength. Your role during the day. Um, I think most of our program coordinators love to be part of the student learning of strengths. Mm -hmm. They see that magic. Um, mentees are really, really good at strength spotting. They are so gifted at it. Um, I was out doing a session in Imperial, did not have my name card in front of me, and I said, I'm just going to have you guys practice, do a little strength spotting here. Do you guys notice anything about me? You 
think about what you've noticed about me when I came in, when you came in. And this young lady, she's just adorable. She goes, well, you talk a lot. I mean a lot. She goes, sometimes I'm like, wow, have you even taken a breath? And I'm like, okay, so I get my card out and I said, what strength do you think that is? And she's like, oh, that's communication. And then I put it back down and another student said, the second you, I came in, you asked me what the best part of my day was. And then you've asked me like seven other questions since I've been here. And I'm like, what, what strength do you guys think that is? And they're so gifted so at strength spotting. And so I think as a program coordinator, and even as a board member, a school coordinator, a counselor, school staff, to see that. Um, it's really affirming that we all have this strength spotting gift within. It seems like somewhere after sixth, seventh grade, we tend to lose that easy ability to focus on strengths because somewhere after that we start focusing on weaknesses first. Mm -hmm. So I think as a coordinator, um, being part of that is an awesome part of knowing you're meant to ease even better. Cool. So when you say that I will be helping with code distribution, what is my role in that? How do I get codes? What do I do with them? You will reach out to me and let me know who has signed up for strengths training. Okay. And then I will send codes back to you. I'll send the code back to you next to that person's name in the email. And I'll also put the code in Civicore. So there's a strengths tab in Civicore that's designed specifically for the code. What's Civicore? <laughs> totally <joking. laughs> Sometimes I think about using a different terminology for it, so like I can make a new name, like Dwayne made Cambridge out of Cambridge, I can make like Civicore out of Civicore, because then I can just like use my own Civicore, Civicore. Um, <laughs> no, create my own language terminology. Um, Civicore is our online database. Yeah. Um, I do as a program coordinator, I do know that. I hope all your program coordinators know that. <laughs> so that's where you would um, have the codes housed, that way we can keep track. And then when a mentor reaches out and says, hey, I lead with input, communication, strategic, woo, and empathy, you can plug those right into Civicor under the strengths tab, and you can run a really cool report that shows you Reports? what your mentor's strengths are. Um, so I think it's kind of a great way, especially before you plan an event, um, before you send out that email, thinking about mentor strengths. Wonderful, wonderful. What other questions do I have? As a program coordinator? Mm -hmm. As a program coordinator, what is the um, cost that I take on, the financial cost? You said it costs teammates. What cost do we invest as a chapter? There is no cost. Um. <laughs> Why wouldn't everybody be doing this? <laughs> There's no cost to you individually as a chapter. Um, it's become part of teammates, part of who we are. Um, so we plan, and we try to plan very um, budget friendly to figure out mm -hmm. timing figure out code distribution and that's probably why we're a little bit more cautious about when we distribute codes because we wouldn't want to give codes to a mentor who is not going to take the survey or maybe not come to training and um, we want to be sure that we do that with intentionality but there's no cost to you as a chapter. Wow. So what's the downside? I can't think of any. Um, <laughs> can you? I, I guess time. Yeah. Um, Time, and when I, when I speak from the perspective of time, I'm thinking about, for you as a program coordinator, to think about what time is best. You don't have to do this in the fall. You don't have to do this in, during National Mentoring Month. You don't have to do it um, at the end of the school year when you're really busy with things. When does it work best for you? So thinking about that and thinking about when to gather your mentors. If that is a 6.30 a.m. training, it won't be for any mentors. Okay, if, if that's what it is, we'll work with you. If it's a 7 p.m. training, we'll work with you. Um, if you've got 15 mentors that sign up, that's okay, we work with that. We wanna make sure that it's um, the right time and it comes with that sense of energy and enthusiasm. So your excitement about it is probably um, the most important piece. You probably can't tell, but I'm very excited. About I can't tell, I can't. Those uh, are some so good questions. After, one more question I think. After um, you, you come out for a day or day and a half, what happens then? Is that the end of strengths for the year? Once you're a strengths chapter, you're always a strengths chapter. So we encourage you to um, check out the resources like Jen and Millie. You'll get a link to the Dropbox, which houses all of our strengths activities. I do a follow-up email with you um, based on what you told me during that day, day and a half that you felt like maybe you need. Maybe it's the parent letter, maybe it's the parent resource guide, maybe it's a school staff activity, and we follow up with that. And then we stay in touch. Um, if you have like, let's say, 
five mentors come on board who want to do strengths, and you know there's probably not any way that we're going to be able to schedule another day and a half, um, you can reach out to me, and because we're doing these strength sessions all over the place all year long, there might be a session that you would be able to zoom into, and then you could facilitate that with your mentors, and you could just zoom into us. So what does a yearly rhythm look like then? So I know I'm required to go to the training at Gallup my first year and then the day, day and a half, but what about the second year? Do I go to the training again? Is it the same? Is it different? Is it required? And then do you still come out and do a day, day and a half of training or is that just the first year when we launch it? We absolutely are flexible on that. So we require it at least the, for the first year, um, but it's definitely up to you. We encourage you to come because you are a great teacher and it's different every year um, because you will, as a seasoned coordinator with strengths, be able to share what's worked for you and also what hasn't worked for you. Um, and then we structure it based on what you feel is best. Um, so some chapters wait a whole year um, and then they, after two years, do another strengths day, day and a half. Um, some chapters decide to do something a little bit sooner. It just kind of depends on what works for you. At Gallup Strengths Day, you'll work with your regional coordinator and you'll come up with a plan. And you'll really talk with them about what they feel um, might be good timing as well. Okay, you have great questions. So the next piece, if I'm a mentor who wants to do strengths with my mentee, what do I do and why? Why would I want to do it? Because it sounds like one more thing. That's what we kind of hear sometimes. So why strengths? Um, I guess my um, short, short explanation as to why we do this is I think we're all looking for ways to be more engaged. I think we're looking for ways for our community members to be more engaged, our chapter um, to be more engaged, our mentees to be more engaged. I know for me as a mentor, sometimes I'm wondering if I have an impact. And so to be able to go in and just practice a little bit of strength spotting with my mentee, even if it's me identifying um, one glimmer of her caring strength or one glimmer um, of her competing strength, for me to be able to help her aim that you know, I know all of us as mentors want to make a difference, but sometimes in a game of checkers, I don't know if I'm doing it. Strengths has given me a little bit more intentionality behind that. Also, the engagement piece. I like knowing that my mentee leaves her mentoring time, like I leave my mentoring time, just more inspired, um, more excited for the next time that we get the opportunity to chat together. Um, so building on engagement, but also what we found through our research is that when we have students that are um, Mesh and, and talking with a mentor that they look forward to see, um, and a mentor who's talking about what's right with them, they're more likely to be more hopeful. And hope is the strongest indicator of success, regardless of life situation, regardless of economic status, regardless of GPA or IQ. Um, high hope kids do amazing things. And so I think as an organization, to know that we have 8,000 mentors who want to make a difference um, strengths gives you one more tool in your mentor toolkit to do that. Um, so that's kind of the why. Also, we're not just a school-based mentoring program, we're now a strength-based mentoring program, and we're really excited about that because mm -hmm. so far it looks like we might be one of the only um, strength-based mentoring programs since we're kind of excited about that. Um, how will it enhance my mentoring relationship? That's one of the questions I often hear. Um, I think it gives us an opportunity to know people better. Um, I think me knowing your strengths test gives me the opportunity to do a better job honoring you for who you are as you are. Um, for me to be able to think about strengths in my in everyday interactions, but particularly with my mentee, um, sometimes I need a tool to focus on what's right because my mentee is, she is great at noticing things sometimes that aren't going so well and that's very typical for a junior high student. So it's awesome for me to have a tool that says, hey, let's Let's shift, shift just a little bit for the next 10 minutes that we have together and let's talk about what's right. Um, so I think it's enhanced my mentoring relationship too. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So if I am in a smaller community and say I have a friend that's in the community next to me, we're both teammates in different chapters, and my friend just took strengths and just found out her mentee strengths, mm -hmm. and that is so, so cool, how do I do it? I've never heard anything about strengths from my chapter before. 
I would encourage you to talk to your program coordinator because each of our program coordinators learns a little bit about strengths at partnership and throughout all of our teammates' language. You can go to the teammates' website and there's a little bit of a resource there, why we do it, how we do it, um, and let your program coordinator know that you're interested in doing strengths so that your chapter can become a strengths chapter. Cool. Cool. And so when my mentee takes strengths, my mentee's in fourth grade, does she take the same assessment? It was like, when I took it, when I took it for work a while, I'm not obviously a strengths mentor yet, but when I took it a while ago for work, um, it was really complicated. I don't think she, if she'd know how to answer them, it was really long, it was timed. I just like, I don't know if that would be suitable for her. Well, we utilize a different resource. It's called Strengths Explorer for our students who are third through eighth grade. So it's a simpler survey, um, not timed, about a third of the questions. Mm -hmm. It takes mentor, um, mentees about 10, 15 minutes to complete the survey. So as a fourth grader, you'll be able to help them identify their top three of 10 talents. Of course, we have all 10 talents and all 34 talents within us, but it'll help your mentee mm -hmm. um, to kind of think about those strengths in action. And then when they're maybe in high school, freshman, sophomore age, they'll take the same survey that oh, you do. Cool, and so I took it for work, so I'd want a new code probably. We would love for you to use your first um, strength survey results because um, we truly see, um, and we know a lot about the Gallup research about the validity. I believe it's a 0 0.8, um, 0 0.8 validity. Um, if I've listened very well in training, I've heard uh, Professor Tess say 0 0.8 validity, which is uncommon in so the social science. Um, because human be behavior, as you know, is quite unpredictable. Humans are unpredictable people, um, or unpredictable creatures. So to have a point eight validity really speaks volumes to the credibility and the um, even the retake. So we, we don't see any need for you to take it again. We'd just love for you to bring your top five with you. Hmm. And I bet your next question is, what do you do if you can't find them? Yeah. Because that was so long ago. I don't even work at that place anymore. Just email me and I'll reach out to Gallup and see if they can find you. Huh. Wow. Do you have future talent in your... <laughs> I knew that was my next question, but I didn't know. <laughs> it was right down here. Uh, so then I go to this training. My mentee might get trained by you or do an activity. Then what do I do? And then we just really encourage you to bring strengths conversations into your mentoring time. Not meant to be prescriptive. It's just meant to be one more tool in your mentor toolkit. So go ahead and talk with them, maybe um, ask them about the survey that they took, what they thought about it. Um, but I think your mentee will probably be really excited to ask you about your strengths in action. One of the things that we do as trainers during Strengths Day, um, we talk with the students about how important their role is in helping you learn your strengths, mm -hmm. helping you acknowledge your strengths, helping you claim them. Mm -hmm. um, because it seems like Students, particularly elementary students, are really gifted strength spotters and coaches. Um, they can really help you identify um, and take those strengths to the next level. So your mentee might be asking you about them as well. Then you might have a set of cards. They're called strengths to go cards. Um, they're red. They've got a, a little uh, metal ring, and you can look for your strengths or your mentee's strengths. Short definition of the strength on the front and on the back are some questions specific for that strength in action. Wonderful. Are there any other questions I should be asking? <laughs> we are really good at, okay, and so when Jim was talking about getting into character, I felt like I just did that. That was, I think, the only time we've done that. Yeah, and I was not super comfortable with it. No, but, no okay. okay. That's how we do strengths in teammates. And then, Tess, I think we both can wrap up by saying, why do you want to do this? Why do you why do you come to work and give <laughs> why why <laughs> gosh Hannah, I apologize in advance for any editing that you might do. Why why are you excited about strengths for teammates? Why don't you go first so I can think about it a little bit? Alright. Um When I think about things in my life that have changed my life in a positive direction, I don't think I have a better example than strengths. Um, it's expanded my ability to see myself. Um, I think when I look back and the more that I train and teach about this and talk out loud and think out loud about it, I was very much centered in a weakness-focused, fixed mindset mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Um, even 
even when I started with teammates in this in my uh, role as a as a coordinator, I think I thought um, there were things that needed to be fixed about me. I think I thought that um, my strengths were things that were wrong with me. Mm -hmm. So the first revelation was this is right about me. The second revelation was how it changed the way that I parented, mm -hmm. and then I s totally saw how it changed my relationship with my mentee, then my coworkers, my family members, um, my friends. And it's really opened a lot of doors for me to learn about other people in a, in a way that um, I just feel very fortunate to be able to um, learn from very wise people. Um, I spoke a little bit today about Kurt Liesfeld, um, CSF guy, one of the greatest teachers I've had in my life. Um, Shane Lopez, one of the greatest teachers, I've, professors I've ever had in my life. Um, and to think about the impact of the positive psychology basis of strengths, um, life-changing. So I'm excited and I feel honored and I feel responsible for sharing this with as many people as I possibly can. Um, so that's why I'm excited every day to share about strengths. That's good. I think for me, uh, when you mentioned what your husband says, what Mike says about when he wants to talk to you, it reminded me actually today I had a coaching um, session this morning mm -hmm. um, with someone that um, works for teammates and I do kind of internal coaching with our staff and um, and I had a coaching conversation today and I it was just an hour and um, and I didn't feel like we got really we didn't really dig super deep in anything but we turned out a plan for what we want to do like maybe for the next six months the next school year um, for her um, okay. with with what she does within the organization and um, and even though we didn't super dive into strength, strength language was laced through it all. And, and even though it wasn't exactly, yeah, I'm very much a let's dig really deep into this stuff. And it wasn't that kind of coaching conversation this time. I've been coaching her for a while. Um, but it was strengths language. It was all strengths based. And I got to use my strengths with her. And she got to use her strengths in talking with me. And just like you mentioned with when Mike likes to talk to you, I walked away from that. That was the best start to my day. Like I couldn't have. It was like at 7.45 at a bakery, like, 30 minutes on the other side of town from where I live, so I like had to be up a little earlier than I normally am and out of the out of my house. And um, but I walked away from that saying this day is really crazy in terms of my schedule, but I'm so excited for it yes. because I was so engaged. I had such a uh, more positive outlook for what was coming because I just simply got to talk about strengths and talk about what's right with her and and the examples of what we're going to be doing is interlaced with her own personal self awareness and then her work and then her family. Mm -hmm. And it was like, because strengths isn't, you can't, if you're doing it right, it should not be isolated. Right. It should, it should not be, you know, the one place. And so that's what, just like you mentioned, like that it just um, permeates every area of your life. And so I think I love, definitely I'm excited because it leads to a higher level engagement. And that is significant when you talk about productivity, when you talk about personal well-being. Yes. Um, if you're engaged in your job or in your life or anything, just that awareness. And I feel like we have so many factors in our lives in the place and state that we live that want to distract us and disengage us mm -hmm. from life. And strengths is a re-engagement. It's getting you back to um, mindfulness of the moment. And I think I really, I really love that because I, I mean, I'm a millennial. I get distracted by, you know, Facebook and Netflix and and I can be online but not have real connections, but this fosters real connections with people. Yes. And so I love that. And then secondly, I am, I love my favorite thing and what I get excited about is when a light bulb goes on in people's heads and they can see themselves more clearly than they ever have before. Mm -hmm. And that's strengths is totally a tool for that. And it's something that in my own walk with strengths I have gone through, knowing that not everyone has maps ingrained in their head, like <laughs> cards in their head, or not everyone like gets excited about ancient Greek. I just got to call my professor and I, I love talking with her and because we're talking about ancient Greek grammar principles, um, but not everyone gets excited about, you know, like knowing that that's not just my weird quirks, but it's a talent of mine. It's something yes. that's really good and right about me. Yes. And I didn't, I mean, I was like, I'm just kind of a weird person, you know, but it actually is what's innately right about me and good and it's a positive uniqueness yes and so me coming to that stage of enlightenment in my own self self-awareness journey um, and then being able to help guide people on that path for themselves mm -hmm. so leading people to a place of enlightenment leading people to a place of oh my gosh that's that's why I do that 
that, you know, that phrase, I'm like, yes. You know? uh, is positive, is encouraging, um, and is really honoring to our uniqueness. And I think it's a forever journey. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of light bulbs this week, um, and I am very grateful for this time mm -hmm. because I came in, um, Hannah will have to do plenty of editing because I came in with a really bad attitude. Um, just have had a couple of just some rough spots, like we all do. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, oh, well, you know about strengths and you're trained in strengths and you're the strengths lady and so all of these things just happen naturally. They don't, but I have to practice it. Mm -hmm. um, so this time leads to a better awareness for me. It doesn't start and stop. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, that ongoing journey, I think that's what, why we yeah. do this mm -hmm. um, for all of us you and I, um, for our team, um, and for the mentors and mentees and program coordinators that are, are sharing this with us. So thanks for tuning in today. Um, we hope this was informative in terms of explaining why and how we do what we do. If you have further questions, you can reach out to Allie or myself, but we look forward to seeing you all on your Strengths Days or again at Gallup this summer, um, and especially anyone that is interested in, in launching a Strengths Chapter. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear from you. And um, another thing that I wanted to make sure to bring up today, super grateful for the program coordinators and mentors who have been willing to contribute to the blog. Yes. It is very exciting to, um, Tess and I can write about strengths that we have um, with ease, but it's harder to write about a strength that you don't have. I and mean, we can do kind of the structured piece around it, but we want to hear from you mm -hmm. how that strength really how it manifests in you, how you how you claimed it and named it. So I am super grateful for those of you who have um, been willing to share your strengths um, messages on the blog. And I would encourage you, if you haven't done that yet, um, to reach out and uh, let Tessa or I know, and we'd be happy to get you on the schedule.